I'm speaking with some of the members of the 1939 Allen Cup winning Port Arthur Senior Hockey Club, known by many as the Bearcats. I'd like to ask each of you what the greatest highlight was for your team's victory in 1939, starting with Joe MacArthur. <coughs> That's a, there are lots of highlights, <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, the, the final game in, in Montreal when we, when we won it, we, we had it in our hand. Okay. That was, uh, you were underdogs going into that, I remember reading. We were underdogs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everywhere we went, we were underdogs. But we only lost two games, didn't we? One game. No, we lost no, one to uh, two. Kimberley. We lost two. Lost to Kimberley. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I thought you said yeah. yeah. one to Kimberley, so, one to yeah. Yeah. Montreal. That's a pretty good record. You mean throughout the whole series, you only lost yeah. two games. Yeah. Don Gordon, what's your greatest memory of the, the victory? Well, of course, naturally, Winning the Allen Cup at the last, but uh, getting along the line, going out to the Allen Cup, getting out of our own division here, beating Geraldton, that was really something. And, uh, Geraldton was our toughest opposition all the way. Senior the hockey has changed in that way then, because at that time Geraldton had a team. What other cities within the Northwestern Ontario region had senior hockey teams that don't have them now? For Arthur, for William, Schreiber, Schreiber Geraldton. Geraldton. <coughs> Uh, Duluth was in the league for a while. Yeah. Virginia and that was. Yeah. yeah. That was an international league. Yeah. Okay. Bones for Fort William. Fort William, of course. <laughs> Kenora? <laughs> Kenora as well? Uh, they never got into our league, no. They did uh, at parks Four. at the time, but. Uh, yeah. Bones McCormick, your greatest memory. Well, it had to be the. Uh, winning the cup. Winning the, the cup, game. I think, for all of us. For so. all of us, right? Yeah. Yeah the one aspect of it and to think that we had we did it in Montreal we found that the uh, forum was full which was an amazing thing to us to see 13 14,000 people it was almost the population of Port Arthur at that particular <laughs> time very interesting Edgar La Prade well I think it, uh, the winning uh, the Allen Cup was a highlight but I want to zero in on a couple Sure. Things. One of them was, I think the score was 4 3 or 4 4 when I scored in my own net. Yes, scored in your own net. The biggest highlight, I think, what made the difference for us to win that championship was this guy yeah. <laughs> going down, taking the puck from behind the defense and skating right through the whole team and scoring the goal that put them, tied us up, I guess. Tied, it tied us no. up. To me, that was, I think, that was an indication. I think we're going to go on and win it. And you're speaking, of course, of your brother, Bert right. Pratt. Right. I'd like to add on to that. At that particular time, we were down by one goal. And it's Bert tied it, and Edgar got the winner. In the last, what, was about three or four minutes. There's lots time. of things to add oh, to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was on the ice when Bert scored that. And when, he, when we went down, I was on right wing. And when he we went over the blue line, Bert was going to pass. but. I cut for the goal, and that defenseman took off after me. Berkeley left it wide open. The skater didn't score it. So I should have gotten an assist on the goal. <laughs> we'll have to rewrite the history books for you, Joe. <laughs> Bert, of course, you recall that scoring yeah, well, of that, that goal. That scene was about the, the highlight of, uh, to me. It was uh, happened to get that goal at that time. And, of course, winning the cup, too. When you returned to Port Arthur, it was to great um, crowds and, wow. and the glory of you coming home. That must be very important to you as well. And do you remember the... We got an indication, Diane. Uh, I think it was, must have been around Horn Paint or someplace. But what was uh, going to happen? Because yeah. all along the siding when we pulled up, there were people with little bands and things of this nature. So yeah. we thought, gee, something's going on. Because as we got closer to home, the crowds got bigger, bigger and bigger. bigger, bigger. bigger. Big. Of course, big, all, yeah. all big of the crowd, yeah. Yeah. Big mm -hmm. crowd at Big crowd at Epping and Oh, yeah. Big crowd. Norm Wright, what about you? Some well, reflections. Well, to be winning the cup, I guess. I like it. And the train ride home by the south. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And Mr. Moriarty, Mike Moriarty? Well, winning the cup. Okay. And just one thing I remember that sticks in my mind. Mm -hmm. The puck was on the red line and I go. And I happen to be there, pull it out. And that was a good thing for me. <laughs>
when you won the uh, when you won the Allen Cup in 1939, the rules that year were that that team would go to the 1940 Olympics. Of course, the Olympics were interrupted due to the war. Um, it's an example of how society, things that happen in society, affect sport. What effect overall do you think the war had on, on the game of hockey? Are there any? comments on that? I can make a comment on a couple of occasions. I give an indication of a chap like Frankie Parker who played uh, for Geraldton, who was an outstanding hockey player in Ripley's Believe It or Not. When war interrupted his service, at least his playing, and he got prisoner of war, of course he came back, he wasn't quite the same person. And I think it ruined his whole career. And then there are people who joined the service, and particularly in pro hockey, their careers were interrupted, and when they came back after two or three years, they just didn't have the initiative to be able to stay in there. So I think it ruined a lot of careers of hockey players. There was also another angle too. It uh, some of, uh, some players got into the NHL. They, they wouldn't have normally got in if there hadn't been a war, because they were taking places of, of players who had gone into the into the services and uh, mm. these. Uh, I know some of them, <clears throat> mind you, some of them uh, got into it, and then they they made it pay. They made they became good hockey players, but when they did get in, uh, normally they wouldn't have made it. They wouldn't have got on a team. They'd have been. There was a, a lot like that, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, it was tough to get into the NHL in them days. Only six teams. In them days, you couldn't change senior teams if you wanted to go to another province. It was a, you had to a get rule up. that wouldn't let you go. Yeah. That was when the war was on. Yeah. I had a chance to go to Valley Field. And uh, I says, I can't get there. I can't make a transfer. They said, well, the only way to join is join the Army and you get down there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did try it later to get in the Army and uh, turn me down, which I should have tried that before. <laughs> <laughs> the expansion, I guess, uh, also did the same thing in that it allowed a lot more people to get into the National Hockey League. It brings me to the question of uh, Thunder Bay, Northwest Ontario has enjoyed great success in hockey at national level and NHL. What do you think are the factors that has allowed that to happen? That when you look back into the history of hockey when you gentlemen were playing, there were some greats produced in this area and they continue to be produced all the way up. Why do you think that's happened? Television. <laughs> Television. Okay. More than anything else. Oh, yes. No, you, you you're going you, back further than that. Further than that. Back before <laughs> television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did they have <clears throat> players like uh, like Edgar in? Well, I think they season. had them. That is because of the fact that winters were long, nothing else to do, yeah. and um, I don't everybody think everybody had a rink in the back area. Yeah, everybody had a rink. Lots they of their own rinks, backyard. and uh, there were no municipally operated rinks in those yeah. days, and and we played out in the flats, and uh, it, that was the thing to do. And uh, I think uh, naturally from that it just blossomed into uh, good hockey players. But they, I don't think any of them are very few of them. I did. I don't think Bert did or any of you had a want, wanted to turn pro. We were just playing because we liked it. Yeah. That's an interesting game, point. Yeah. Now when you look at salaries of players and when you look back to when Edgar, for example, you broke in the National Hockey League, do you think that's a bad thing that, that now the impetus is on the money factor in terms of getting into the National Hockey League? for the prestige and the money. That wasn't the reason why you people were doing it. Why did you start to play hockey? Love the game. Well, there's one thing about hockey at that particular time, and the Iron Turn professional, one deterrent to turning pro is that once you played one professional hockey game, you could not go back to amateur. Yeah. So if you were 21, 22 years old and you were offered a, offered a tryout, unless you were an exceptionally good player, you wouldn't take it because it would have been the, the end of your hockey playing days. What made you start when, when we were kids, every house had a rink in the backyard. And there was a, what the hell did they call them? South Ends. The South, 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 South End. The West Ends had a team. They'd come to our rink and play. We'd go to their rink and play. And that started. We were only young then. And you just grew up because you liked it. Competition between Price and Fourth William was really something back yeah. in those days. The midget, all the midget organization in Price and all the midget organization in Fourth William, and 
and you played off and got the best in Port Arthur, and then you played off and got the best in Fort William, and the two played against each other. So there was a lot of pride involved. A lot of there. rivalry yeah. and pride. And, and that was the big thing in a, in a, in a minor mm -hmm. hockey or player, because you got into that playoff with Fort William, Port Arthur. You Ooh, played, yeah. in the, played in the inside. Oh, yeah, then you were playing in the inside. The inside. Yeah. Otherwise, we were outside. If you're in Port Arthur, you got a trip to Fort William. That's right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, in those days, too, there, you, there, were, there wasn't the skiing that they have now. That the, you know, a lot of ch children would go into skiing rather than play hockey. And it's, nowadays, it's, uh, there are so many things to do with television and all that stuff. And we had lots of teams in them days. The other oh, thing, it wasn't yeah. as expensive yeah, midget, either. Oh, but it was yeah. called a junior midget, midget, and senior midget. That's yeah. what they called it no, in them days. No, no, just junior midget and senior midget. And what? There was a bad, junior, there was junior midget. No, yeah. when I played, yeah. midget. when I played, there was junior midget and senior midget. Well, there was junior midget, that was before midget, our time. midget yeah. and uh, right. That's yeah, right. You guys are all young punks. Midget, junior midget, and senior yeah. midget. Yeah. 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 That was that yeah. was. Yeah. You mentioned the Port Arthur Fort William rivalry. Um, one of the individuals actually around the table crossed the track, so to say, to play for Port Arthur. Was there resentment or uh, like the rivalry there and the pride factor? Was it that entrenched when it was that important that that Port Arthur Fort William won? Perhaps yeah. that also was a factor then for producing such good hockey players. Oh yeah, well when we when we won that cup, you know. Uh, there was uh, O'Leary was from Fort William, I was from Fort William, Jazzy was from Fort William. Bobby, oh, was, Bobby was from Fort William. And the rest That's are all Bobby from... Bobby Nanahan. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They're all from Port Arthur, you see, so... But you were welcome home as a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't did, say... after, after we got out of here, like Fort William or Port Arthur, after they got out of here, the rivalry was over. I mean, the, the, like, yeah, I, was out, way, yeah. I was playing with Fort William out in Calgary in the uh, playoffs and we got a, a telegram there from uh, Hogarth, yeah, uh, Port yeah. Arthur, and he, he bought, uh, uh, he, he said, uh, buy all the boys a hat. Well, a five dollar was a, was a good hat, you see. So he, they bought us all hats for, it was a funny instance about that too. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, we, after we lost out out there, we went up to Banff. Uh, to see the, the hotel and everything. We were all going in the hotel, and uh, we came out, and Ross Knowles and Gordy Hockwell and Charlie Seabrook, the, the trainer, were out in front, and Knowles and uh, uh, the Hockwell and Seabrook were killing them so laughing, and they said, what's the trouble? And he said, uh, Hockwell had this hat on, and it blew off in, in the gutter, and Knowles jumped on it. <laughs> And this is one of the five dollar hats. So, so uh, Hockle says, "That's on you, Knowles." He said, "That was your hat." <laughs> he jumped up and wrote that. <laughs> what do you see as the future of hockey, both locally and National Hockey League? Do you see it strengthening or weakening? Just some comments on that. I kind of think it will strengthen. It, it's. Although a lot of kids are, are dropping out of hockey because, oh, yeah. uh, my own opinion, I'm against triple A uh, or what they call representative yeah, yeah. teams. Representative teams uh, for the uh, kids. Traveling teams with kids. Oh yeah. Because so many kids, like if they they try out for this uh, traveling team, they don't make it, and they quit and go play skiing or, or go skiing or, yeah, or play right. basketball or something. Mm -hmm. That's right. And sometimes the very best hockey player has quit. He, he uh, doesn't make, he's, like kids when they're growing up, uh, a bigger kid, he's, he finds his coordination later. A little guy, he comes along, he's got all his coordination and he shows up really good, you see. But then uh, later on when, when they get, the bigger kids gets their coordination, he, they, they get more even. But in the meantime, he's trying out for a team. He hasn't got his coordination, so he doesn't make it. So he goes to somebody else. Yeah. No, so you're losing some of the good players. players. I think they are. I think. Yeah, the kid, the kid couldn't long. make that one. He would quit altogether. If he uh, that team. Then he would go curling or skiing. Yeah, That's where they yeah, go now. Yeah. 
You can't make them team? Oh, the heck with them. Quit. Well, there was a lot more competition among the young kids in the back oh, in the, yeah. and they had midget, junior midget, senior midget. There, yeah. there is a little yeah, bit yeah, different uh, uh, attitude oh, with the see. kids, too. I think of the number of teams that used to be in the north end, that team. Yeah. Uh, How did you make five, it on six. to the 39 team? Were you selected or did you earn your way onto that team? Oh, you earned your way. Yeah, you yeah. came up right through all the All these guys yeah. earned it. We all came up from the van. <laughs> Were you selected so, to the senior team? Joe was selected. Now everybody else had I'll to earn their place. I'll tell you, I had quit playing hockey that year because I went after my boss out in the mill in the spring and, and he said, uh, in the winter, and he said, uh, uh, as long as you're playing hockey, you're going to stay where you are. And I was working in the lab and I couldn't see any future in it. So uh, I said, okay, I'm through in the spring. So he says, come and see me in the spring. So I went to see him, and he put me in the electrical department. So I quit playing hockey, but uh, I, was, uh, I, I was only on skates about three times, but M uh, Michaels was the boss in the mill, and he was going through the mill one day, and he, somebody must have been after him, because he called me over, and he said, uh, do you want to play hockey? And I said, well, oh, doesn't matter. He said, well, if you want to play, come on out with Port Arthur. So I went out with Port Arthur and I made the team. So, but when I started playing, they've been losing. They've been winning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when I started playing, they start losing. <laughs> that, that I'm glad is, you corrected that. <laughs> yeah. That is one of the basic things that has happened in hockey is that when we were kids, our ambition really was to be able to be good enough to make the senior team of each yeah. of the cities. Yeah. Whereas now, it appears as though the ambition of the kids is to make the midget AAA team. And if you don't make the midget AAA team, that's it. You could. Actually, so senior you, hockey has When, when has you're gone. looking at an end of a career at 17 years old, well... How old were you, gentlemen, in th that period of your life, in 1939? What was the average age of this team? Well, Edgar was the youngest. The youngest at 19. He's just a kid. Okay. And Joe, no, I think I was, you O'Leary was the oldest. He was two months older than me. Oh, 20, was he about 26? Eh? 26? He, he was 25. I was 25, so he must have been. Eh? What did you say? <laughs> Nothing good. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that employers were very helpful to yes. hockey players. Is that something that has changed now or was very common back then? It was well, common yes. back then. Yes, it was common then. <laughs> wasn't for the provincial paper mill, a lot of us wouldn't have made, you know, kept going. You ever won the Allen Cup? I was working at the shipyard for 25 cents an hour. <laughs> and when we started the season, when the season opened up, when they raised money to 35 cents an hour. But then when the first season was over, I went back to 25 cents an hour. <laughs> Then the, year we, yeah, the, year, month. <laughs> the year we won the Allen Cup, they said, oh boy, this is you got a job over at the provincial paper mill. <laughs> 56 cents an hour, and everything wow. was made. Just for some closing thoughts, uh, maybe just quickly, each of you, just a closing thought on, on hockey and Thunder Bay. Just a, a statement. Do you want me to? Joe, that? go ahead. Go back, uh, go back to 29. Do you remember that? 39? 29. 29, 29 yes. That yeah. oh, I like it. midget team that we were on yeah. went through the league, never lost a game, and you only played one outside team at that time, and we won that one too. Yeah. We never lost a game. South End, so was it? Yeah, yeah. South End. you remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, South End. Yes, I remember that. Joe? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, you, you want hockey here at the Lake Edward. Thoughts, just general thoughts. Uh, uh, it, it could be... Uh, I think it's going, the Flyers are doing a good job, I believe. And, and the minor hockey, uh, they, they are also doing good. I watched that uh, program on uh, TV the other night there, uh, this uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, that minor hockey. That fellow that was balling that 10-year-old kid out, he should have been taken by the neck and pulled up and Never allowed it again in yeah, the, yeah. Well, the rink. <laughs> because a ten-year-old kid is not. No. When I when I I was coached the, the midget hockey club for ten years, and uh, I never had a parent go after me. Uh, I played. If a kid signed with us, they played the same amount of time as any other kid on the team. And and you you have to keep the kids' interest. And if if they get coaches who do that and keep the fun in the game for them. I think that uh, hockey, the league, 
It's always going to be a, 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 around here, hockey at the lake. We, we have fellows now who, who uh, are too old for, for junior, and they're all playing in this commercial league, and there's a lot of them playing good hockey yeah. players in that commercial league. So it's still alive and well? Oh, I believe so. 